In this lesson, I want to explain to you about net present value internal rate of return. We're actually going to look at some examples in the textbook on page 226 and 233. First, beginning with net present value. Net present value is probably the best evaluation technique for a project because you're properly discounting back the future cash flows where the payback period doesn't take into consideration the opportunity cost of those cash flows. And in the example we're provided on page 226, we're told that initially a uh, project's going to cost $350,000. We're going to have a cash flow of $16,000 at the end of the first year, $16,000 in the second year, and then finally we're going to get uh, the building's going to be sold back for $450,000. So we're going to have $450,000 plus $16,000 to give us a cash flow of $466,000. So what we need to do is we need to discount back these future cash flows to day zero. In Excel, what we have to do is we have to net out that initial cash uh, outflow of $350,000. We're going to do that in a separate uh, cell and find out what the net present value is. So uh, we're told in the textbook the net present value of this project is $59,323. So I'm going to show you how they get to this result in Excel. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find a blank cell and I'm going to go to the f of x function and I'm going to go under financial and we're going to find net present value so if you kind of click in that area and if you want to type the letter N we can scroll out down a little bit so we'll see NPV right here so we're going to select this NPV and we're going to hit OK now in the textbook in this example the opportunity cost for this project was 7 percent so we're going to put in 0.07 our value in the first year is going to be the 16,000. At the end of the second year, we have another 16,000. And finally, in the last year, we have the 466,000. So if we look over here, we can see that the present value of all those cash flows is $409,323.10. Another thing I want to point out, in, in this example and most textbook examples, the cash flows in future years were all positive cash flows. But it is possible to have, perhaps in the first year, a negative cash flow, even in the second year. Uh, the idea here would be discounting back negative cash flows to day zero. But just be aware that it is possible to have negative cash flows in successive years. All right, I'm going to hit OK here, and here's where the big difference is in Excel. You, you have to net out the initial cash outflow of the negative $350,000 separately. So I'm going to type in negative $350,000, and then right below that, if I hit the Greek letter sigma, it's going to sum up what's in that column. So I'll hit the, click that there. And if we hit OK, we see, yeah, this does match up to our textbook example on page 226, where the net present value was $59,323.10. And, and the rule is that if net present value is positive, we accept the project. And again, um, remember that you know cash flows is not guaranteed. Uh, later, we'll look at sensitivity analysis and scenario analysis. You know what what would happen if the cash flows changed. And also, you know, the interest rate that we're using with this is, uh, was it at 7%? You know, is that the correct interest rate? We hope that we're approximating the opportunity cost correctly. The next thing we want to look at is what's called internal rate of return. So internal rate of return, by definition, let me type the definition in here. So internal rate of return. And that sets... NPV equal to zero, so a potential future test question. So internal rate of return sets net present value exactly equal to zero. Okay. Uh, internal rate of return is another way that we can compare a project or make a decision on a project. Say, for example, our benchmark or hurdle rate was 10%. As long as the internal rate of return was greater than that opportunity cost of 10%, we would accept the project. One of the pitfalls with internal rate of return especially if having to make decisions between mutually exclusive projects is 
a manager may take on a project that gives him a very high internal rate of return or, or she may take on a project that gives a good internal rate of return that make them look good but is this the best project for the company you know and with net present value you really can't go wrong you know what adds the most value to the company but anyway to to show you for the example that we had what i could do is going back to this present value of these cash flows if i go back and click on the f of x I could do by trial and error, you know, put in different interest rates. So let's say that I put in 10%. And what I would notice down here is that the present value of these cash flows went down. Again, the idea of an inverse relationship that when interest rates go up, present value is going to go down. And when I net out that negative 350,000, we can see here that the present value, the net present value went to 2788129. So it dropped a bit. Well, let's just try another one. Let's hit F of X again. Let's say that I went to 13%. Well, when I do that, I see the present value is 349,650,101. I hit OK, and well, we're getting closer to zero. So not quite there, but you know, I'd have to do a lot of trial and error to try to get it exactly equal to zero. Uh, easier way to do this, though, is if we go to the f of x function and I go to financial and we're going to find internal rate of return so if you just type the letter I once you're in there and we scroll down a little bit we can see internal rate of return now the big difference here is when we do internal rate of return we will include that negative cash flow whereas the net present value you did not want to do that uh, oftentimes students make the mistake of when they pull up the net present value in the first value they'll put a negative cash flow for the initial cash flow and we don't want to do that but with internal rate of return we will and we're actually going to highlight the range of those cash flows and it's going to give us that internal rate of return so I'm going to click on internal rate of return and hit OK you notice it will have values and a guess and for our purpose we can ignore the guess for now but the values I'm going to highlight the negative cash flow and all those following positive cash flows. So I'm going to click on that negative 350 and highlight all the way down. And you notice over here it gives us 0.1296 or an internal rate of return of 12.96%. So if I hit OK, and again I, I highly suggest rounding these out to four decimal places in finance. So if you go back up here and, and I click increase the decimal, go out four, we have 12.96 percent and it, you know if I want to go back up and do that trial and error again you know kind of let's go back up here and fix that to 12.9609 percent so I go 0.12096 percent let me check the number on that one 0 0.9609 okay point one two nine six oh nine well you can see right here that gets us to that three hundred fifty thousand dollars and if I hit OK uh, that's pretty close to zero for me so uh, the purpose of this lesson was to explain how to calculate net present value in Excel and internal rate of return that ends our lesson